thank you very much for inviting me here today. Um, I'm going to present a joint paper together with Alessandra Buratto and Luca Grosset from the Department of Mathematics of the University of Padua. And since our paper concerns a dynamic model for native advertising, first of all, I'm going to clarify what native advertising is. But before starting, I just want to say if anyone has any question, just suggestion or even comments, just please interrupt me. So let's focus on the figure displayed in this slide. This figure represents the online page of the Wall Street Journal. And in the central box of this figure, we can find the proper content of the platform. So here we can see the different articles written by the journalists. While on the right part of this figure, we can find a standard advertising supplied by Sotheby's. And it is very easy for us to recognize it as advertising since it is very different from the typical platform content. On the other hand, on the left part of this figure, we can find an article that has a little label on the top saying paid program AWS, meaning that this article is in fact native advertising supplied by Amazon Web Services. So we can see that native advertising is a kind of advertising uh, that resemble the typical platform content, but it is not just that because uh, this native advertising is uh, indeed an article that can be read by the consumer of the platform. And the only ways a consumer has to recognize it as advertising is through little labels saying paid program, sponsored by, supported by, or similar. So uh, it can be very hard for consumers to recognize this kind of uh, this kind of advertising as advertising, and this made uh, this native advertising very effective. I also want to say that native advertising uh, can be found in any kind of communication media. Uh, for instance, also on social media in the form of a post, a video, and even of a tweet. So it is uh, a very um, use marketing tool. I hope it is clear that native advertising is a marketing tool aiming to mimic the regular topics of the platform on which it is placed. And for this reason, it is also known as a sponsor content. Moreover, by a decision of the Federal Trade Commission in 2015, it must be declared to allow consumers to recognize it. So we introduced this concept of native advertising in a dynamic model created on the following idea. Let's us assume that a firm wants to promote its brand value throughout a communication media using different kinds of advertising, the standard one and the net one. We have seen that native advertising may be very effective due to its striking resemblance to the main content of the platform However, it may, be, um, it may have also a negative effect on the perceived, credi perceived credibility of the media outlet. And this happens because uh, a consumer may, may feel deceived uh, when, they, uh, when he realizes that he has spent time in paying attention, reading an article, watching a video, which is in fact advertising. So consumers may also react by losing their trust in the credibility of the media outlet, and this has been proven by several empirical studies. So to counteract this negative effect on the credibility, a media outlet can invest in high quality content or can fix an upper bound to limit native advertising on its platform. So we studied this situation where there is a firm uh, trying to promote its brand value throughout advertising and the media outlet that has to consider a trade-off between gaining profit through native advertising and a consequent loss of credibility as a stackable differential game where the uh, media act as the leader, since it is the media, the players, that can decide to accept or not native advertising. So we uh, study this model to answer to these research questions. First of all, under what conditions may a media accept publishing native advertising? And uh, what, uh, what is this maximum level fixed by the media outlet to limit native advertising on its platform? Furthermore, if native advertising is admissible for the media, is it also prof profitable? 
And last but not least, this is going to be the most interesting question. If media, if a, a media outlet accepts publishing native advertising, does its credibility remain positive in the long term? So we try to answer this question through our MOGA, and we are going to now try to formalize the MOGA. And we formalize the model just starting from the firm. So in our game, the firm is the follower. And uh, this firm is represented in the game uh, through uh, the state variable of its stock of goodwill. And as typical for this kind of game, uh, we uh, just uh, formalize the goodwill evolution using the narrow and the harrow model. So we have that the goodwill at, at time t of the advertised brand, G of t, is of course subject to a natural decay, if not well sustained, with a, a decay parameter delta, but can be sustained by the investment of uh, the firm in publishing the standard advertising A and native advertising N with their respective efficiency parameters, gamma A and gamma N. So from the goodwill evolution, we can see that native advertising may have a positive effect on the goodwill of the firm uh, investing in advertising. But at the beginning, I also explained that this native advertising uh, may also have a negative effect on the perceived credibility of the media outlet. So to represent the media outlet in the game, uh, I recall that the media is the leader of the game, we uh, consider as a state variable the credibility of the media. But uh, since there is uh, no literature concerning credibility in this kind of game, and um, since for us uh, the credibility of, the, of a media outlet is uh, something related to the profit of uh, the media itself, we decide to um, formalize the evolution of the credibility just resembling the Nello and Harrow model for goodwill. So also for the credibility at time t of the media outlet, t of t, we have that uh, it is uh, subject to a natural decay, it's not well sustained with a decay parameter epsilon. But of course, the credibility can be um, sustained by the investment of the media outlet in publishing high quality content W. So W is going to be a control of the media in the game. Moreover, in the credibility evolution, we, uh, we consider also this negative effect due to native advertising. And um, we can see here that there is this negative effect parameter alpha, which is a positive parameter, uh, that is going to be a very important parameter for the world analysis. But uh, at the beginning, I also explained that another way, another useful way, for a media outlet to counteract this damage to its credibility is to uh, fix an upper bound to limit native advertising on, it, on its platform. So we introduce another leader control that is this capital N strategy. And this capital N uh, function is an upper bound on the native advertising flow of the firm. So uh, what it is interesting here is that uh, uh, we consider uh, control in an innovative way, because from the formulation at the end of the slide, we can see that uh, the capital N strategy, which is a strategy of the media outlet, so a strategy of the leader in the game, is upper bounding uh, the little N strategy that is a, large, a strategy of the firm, so of the follower of our game. And this is kind of inno innovative for this kind of gaming. And, um, this is going to give us some uh, useful insights. So, um, for what concern the uh, payoffs of the two players, um, of course, we are considering an infinite time horizon game. And um, uh, for this reason, uh, the aim of the firm, so the aim of the follower, is to maximize a discounted profit, uh, choosing suitable values for his strategies A and N representing respectively the standard and native advertising flows. And as typical for this kind of game, we have that the profit is given by a linear revenue related to goodwill and also a cost part related to the investment for publishing uh, standard advertising A 
and the cost part related to the investment for, uh, for publishing native advertising and while for what concerns the media outlet, also the media outlet that is the leader of the game wants to uh, maximize its own discounted profit with uh, the same discount rate rule. And uh, of course, the media maximize this function with respect to uh, its controls that are the investment for credibility W, so the investment for publishing high quality content and the capital and upper bound on native advertising. Also here in the media payoff, we can see that there is a linear revenue related to credibility and of course a cost part related to the investment for publishing high quality content. Uh, furthermore, in the media outlet payoff, there is also a revenue part that is highlighted in orange that corresponds exactly to the orange part in the firm payoff. And this happens because the amount paid by the firm to investing in advertising offers gains profit to the media outlet. So um, just to clarify something more about the cost function that I uh, just formalized here, um, the cost function for the standard advertising A is given by a quadratic and a linear part. And since we are considering all um, since we are considering parameters that are uh, all positive and since we are considering non-negative controls, a uh, non-negative, uh, the shape of this function is the one described by the continuous line in the graph on the right. So we have that the cost function for the standard advertising A is of course non-negative, uh, convex, uh, invertible, differentiable and with uh, all the regularity that we may need. Of course, uh, uh, the same structure of the cost function is given for the cost function for native advertising N and for the cost function for the investment for credibility W with different parameters. So KN, KW, theta N and theta W, of course. Uh, what I want to uh, stress here is that usually in this kind of game, only the firm point of view is taken into account. Well, we here decide also to consider the media outlet problem. So we are introducing the problem of the media outlet. And honestly, the media outlet optimal control problem is going to be the most interesting part of the analysis. Uh, furthermore, um, I explained at the beginning that native advertising may have a negative effect on the credibility of the media outlet. but uh, from the media outlet profit, we can see that uh, an eventual damage to credibility due to native advertising will result also in a damage to, uh, to the profit since there is a linear revenue related to credibility. So uh, this is very important to be observed. So in this slide, I just recall uh, the wall Stuckelberg differential game that we want to solve. So here we have our uh, Stuckelberg game with the infinite time horizon. I recall at the beginning the follower uh, payoff, so the firm payoff, and also the media payoff, so the leader payoff with their respective strategies. And then I recall the goodwill and credibility evolution with positive initial condition at the end, um, the typical non-negativity bounds for controls. I also uh, want to highlight once more that we have a non-typical bounce on the native advertising strategy, the little end strategy, because this is uh, a strategy of the follower that is upper bounded by a strategy of the leader. So uh, we I are have a gonna... question. Yeah? Sorry, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, if I sum this JF and JM, then these cost terms will cancel, right? CA and CN. So is it like... Uh, you see in JF, there is minus yeah. CA. See? Maybe I'm yeah. not reading it correctly. And in yeah, yeah, yeah. JM, there is positive CA. So in, yeah. this means that if the leader and follower are jointly optimizing, then these cost terms are zero. They um, are they cancel basically. Yeah, if you consider them together. But uh, during this kind of game, uh, we are maximizing separately the two profits. And 
Um, I mean, the analysis of the cost of uh, the native advertising and standard advertising is very important because native advertising is going to have um, an impact on the credibility okay. of uh, the media outlets. So we, can, we cannot just delete uh, this uh, cost. No, no. Uh, it's, uh, one is paying the other. One ah. is paying the cost, and the other one is paying the revenue. Sorry, I'm in the train. I cannot comment much. Yeah, I understood, but thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, solving this game, we are going to search for an open loop Zuckerberg, uh, for an open loop Zuckerberg equilibrium. So, one of the issues that we have to consider is, of course, time consistency. So, uh, just to recall how to solve this kind of problem, uh, we assume that the leader, so the media outlet, to declare its strategy, W bar and capital N bar, and then the follower, that is the firm, uh, compute its best response functions to the leader strategies. So the follower is going to solve uh, this optimal control problem. And uh, since we are considering a discount, an infinite time horizon problem with a discount rate, uh, we uh, consider the current value Hamiltonian function for the followers, so for the firm investing in advertising. And of course, we want to maximize this function with respect to the firm controls that are the standard advertising flow A and the native advertising flow N. But before doing this maximization, what it is important to be observed is that applying the Pontryagin maximum principle, we can directly compute the uh, costate function lambda one and lambda two of the follower. And this is a key point of our problem because um, since we are able to compute these follower costate functions, we can see that these costate functions do not depend either on the states or on the leader's control. So this means that they are non-controllable by the leader. And this is a sufficient condition to ensure the time consistency of our open loop Zuckerberg equilibrium. So uh, since we have uh, um, we verified the uh, time consistency of our, of our uh, equilibrium, we are going to uh, maximize our current value Hamiltonian function with respect to A and N. So uh, the maximization with respect to A, where I, where I recall that A is the standard advertising strategy, gives us this result. Of course, since we are looking for an open loop Zuckerberg equilibrium in an infinite time horizon, we are expecting a constant value and we obtain a constant value. And since we are searching for uh, non negative value uh, controls, so we need to take the positive part of this constant. But uh, um, of course, more interesting is the um, uh, sensitivity analysis of this constant because we can see that the standard advertising flow increases in the weight of goodwill in terms of revenue and also in the standard advertising efficiency gamma A. Uh, for instance, well, for what concerns gamma A, what we can see is that uh, higher is this efficiency of standard advertising gamma A in the uh, goodwill evolution, higher is going to be the goodwill. And as also IR is going to be the revenue given by goodwill in the firm uh, profit. So, of course, higher is going to be the investment for standard advertising. Um, and of course, this standard advertising strategy decreases in the cost coefficients KA and theta A to publish standard advertising. And this makes sense because, of course, higher the cost to publish standard advertising, lower the investment. Uh, maximizing the current Hamiltonian function of the follower that we have seen before. Now, with respect to the native advertising flow, we obtain a kind of similar result in some way. Because if we uh, just look at the uh, first value inside the minimum brackets, we can see that this value is very similar to the standard advertising strategy. Uh, just with different uh, um, efficiency parameter gamma n and cost parameter theta n and k n. Uh, so also the sensitivity analysis is the same for this uh, threshold. What it is interesting to be note here is that uh, 
we are for the native advertising strategy, uh, we do not just have uh, a non negativity bound, but we also have an upper bound that was given by the capital and strategy of the media outlet. So once we have computed this uh, positive part cost and value, we need also to take the minimum between uh, uh, this cost and value and the upper bound fixed by the media outlet uh, that is the leader of the game. So uh, we can see that uh, the native advertising strategy of the firm uh, promoting its brand value uh, depends on the leader control capital N. So we have that this follower strategy little n depends on the leader strategy capital N. But this is not an issue in terms of time consistency because we have already proved that, proven that uh, the follower for state functions are non-controllable by the leader. So our um, um, our open loop Zuckerberg equilibrium is time consistent. So since we have obtained the followers best response function, we can substitute them in the leader's problem. So in the problem of the media outlet. And of course, also the media outlet wants to maximize its own current value Hamiltonian function with respect to its own controls that are W the investment for uh, publishing high quality content, so the investment for credibility, and the capital and upper bound to limit native advertising. Um, since we can see that this current value Hamiltonian function of the leader is additively separable in W and capital N, we maximize separately before in W and then in capital N. And the maximization with respect to W gives us this result, which is once again a cost and value and uh, for which we have to consider the positive part. So this is, uh, um, this is the investment for credibility. And what we can say about, uh, from an economic point of view is that this investment for credibility increases in the weight of credibility in terms of revenue. And this means, of course, that higher is the revenue related to credibility for the media outlet, higher is gonna be the investment for increased credibility. So this investment for publishing high quality content W. And once again, this investment for credibility decreases in the cost coefficient to publish uh, high quality content. So with respect to KW and theta W. So just to recall what we have obtained so far, uh, we have obtained the standard advertising flow, the native advertising flow for the firm, and the investment for credibility for the media outlet. And we can see that uh, uh, all these results have to consider positive parts because we have to uh, respect the uh, non-negativity bounds for controls. But of course, uh, the analysis is interesting when we have non-trivial solution. So when uh, all these cost and part are non-zero. Uh, so uh, to make the analysis interesting from now on, I'm gonna assume that the inner solutions of this custom, of these uh, positive parts are positive. So I'm gonna just uh, remove all the positive part and assume that all these constants are positive. So this is my assumption from, uh, from now on. And just to recall what we are doing, we want at this point to maximize the leader. Uh, so the media uh, current Hamiltonian function with respect to the capital N strategy. But uh, uh, from the current Hamiltonian function highlighted in orange, we can see that uh, this uh, function depends on capital N just through the native uh, advertising strategy. Where the native advertising strategy, the little n strategy, was the minimum between a cost and value by assumption and this capital N, where capital N is a non negative, uh, when uh, capital N has non negative values. So the maximization with respect to capital N is going to be more tricky, but of course more interesting. And uh, what I want everyone to focus on now is this uh, cost and positive cost and value that I highlighted in red, because whenever capital N is greater than this cost and value, uh, then the native advertising flow of the firm is going to be this cost and value, while if capital N is lower than this cost and value, of course, the native adver advertising flow will coincide uh, with capital N. 
So this cost and value is very important. And uh, this cost and value is exactly the same that we are gonna see in the next slide above, um, below the uh, graph on, uh, uh, on the right. So this cost and value is the same that we can see here below the graph on the right. And uh, this graph uh, allows us to uh, compute the, uh, the capital M strategy representing the upper bound for the media outlet. So what we are doing now is uh, uh, that we, um, we have computed that uh, uh, find uh, capital M maximizing the current Hamiltonian function of the media corresponds to find the capital N maximizing this function C. Well, the function C uh, uh, has a, a shape that is uh, represented on the graph on the right. And the shape of this function is represented with respect to the parameter alpha. So I want to recall that alpha uh, is the parameter representing the damage to, uh, to the credibility of the media outlet due to native advertising. So the shape of this function depends on the damage uh, to credibility due to native advertising. And just looking at the function of the right, what we can see is that we want to maximize this function with respect to capital N. So uh, assuming that this parameter alpha is lower than a suitable threshold alpha bar, we want to maximize the light blue line with respect to capital N. So capital N can be any values uh, from the vertical line to plus infinity. While if uh, we are um, at, uh, if uh, alpha is uh, exactly equal to the threshold alpha bar, oh, uh, exactly equal to the threshold of a bar, then we are looking at the green line. And to maximize the green line, we can consider any value uh, for capital N from the vertical line to plus infinity, but also capital N equal to zero. Finally, if alpha is greater than this threshold alpha bar, we want to maximize the yellow function so we can only consider capital N equal to zero. But what does this mean? This means that if the damage to credibility is low enough so that this uh, negative effect parameter alpha is lower than a suitable threshold, then the capital N upper bound strategy is going to be a positive value and can be any value watching at the light blue line from the vertical lines to plus, plus infinity. So this capital N value is going to also be uh, greater then the constant displayed, uh, the constant uh, corresponding to the vertical line. While if the damage to credibility is too high, we are looking at the yellow line. And uh, this means that the capital and upper bound strategy for the media outlet needs to be equal to zero. So no native advertising is allowed on the media platform because uh, uh, the capital N upper bound is equal to zero and also the native advertising flow is going to be equal to zero. So from a more uh, formal way, what we have found is that the native advertising upper bound uh, for the media outlet can be any value in the first interval if the damage to credibility is low enough but it needs to be equal to zero when the damage to credibility is too high. I mean, uh, this kind of result is non-typical non for this kind of game because we haven't found a specific value in all the cases for capital N, but um, uh, this is not an issue for us because I mean, of course, capital N is a strategy for the media outlet in the game, but capital N is representing an upper bound. So we are more interested in uh, uh, saying if this capital N strategy is an active or an inactive constraint. And what we have found is that if the damage to credibility is low, so alpha is lower than alpha bar, then uh, the upper bound capital N is an inactive constraint. While if the damage to credibility is high, uh, so alpha greater than alpha bar, then this native, adverti uh, native advertising upper bound is an active constraint. So this is what we have found. And uh, we can see that the native advertising optimal upper bound optimal strategy for the media outlet depends on the parameter alpha representing the negative effect of native advertising to credibility. So this parameter alpha is very important in the analysis. 
And of course, uh, uh, it is important to understand better the threshold alpha bar. And looking at the threshold alpha bar, we can see that this threshold decreases with respect to eta, where eta uh, was the marginal revenue with respect to credibility. And this means that higher the marginal revenue for the media outlet with respect to its credibility, lower is going to be this threshold alpha bar. And this means that narrower is going to be the interval for, um, of admissibility for native advertising while this uh, threshold alpha bar increases in theta n, while theta n was a cost parameter for the firm investing in, start in native advertising. So for the media outlet, theta n is a revenue parameter. And of course, IR is this revenue parameter with respect to native advertising for the media outlet. Greater is going to be alpha and greater is also going to be the interval of admissibility for native advertising. So um, at this point, we have found all the strategies of uh, the leader and of the follower of the game, so of the, fir of the media outlet and of the firm, and we can compute the uh, state variables of our problem. But the only interesting state variable in this game is the credibility. So we are going to analyze just the credibility. And we consider the credibility steady state since we are considering an infinite time horizon game. And um, just recalling what we have found, uh, we have seen that if the damage to credibility is low enough, so alpha is lower than the threshold alpha bar that we have analyzed, the upper bound the capital N of the media outlet was an inactive constraint. And this, was, um, and this also implies that uh, the native advertising was allowed on the media platform, so the native advertising flow of the firm was positive. And this allowed us to compute this credibility steady state, uh, which is saying to us that um, um, in this situation, what happens is that the media outlet decides to accept the damage to its credibility to gain some profit, and we are going to understand this, this fact later. But um, uh, what is interesting is also what happens when the damage to credibility is too high. So when the damage to credibility is too high, means that alpha is greater than the threshold alpha bar, uh, the uh, capital N up per bound for the media outlet was equal to zero, so was an active constraint and um, no native advertising was allowed on the media platform, so also the native advertising optimal flow was equal to zero. And this allows us to compute a different credi credibility steady state for this situation. And what happens in this situation is that since the damage to the media outlet credibility is too high, the media outlet decides to, um, uh, to, uh, to pers uh, preserve its credibility by not accepting native advertising on its platform. And uh, since by assumption, uh, the um, constant inside the brackets multiplied with alpha is a positive constant, uh, I said that before by assumption, uh, we can see that the credibility steady state uh, in uh, the first situation, so when native advertising is allowed, is lower than the credibility steady state when no native advertising is allowed. So this allows us to understand that there is uh, um, there is a damage to credibility by publishing native advertising. So we may also be interested in understanding why does a media house that really accept publishing native advertising if this native advertising will result in a damage to the credibility. And we are going to answer to this question by answering to our research questions. So uh, just to recall what we have found, uh, we have found that the condition under which a media outlet accept publishing native advertising is that the damage to its credibility is not too high. So this negative effect parameter alpha needs to be lower than the threshold alpha bar. 
while the maximum level picked by the media outlet to limit native advertising on its platform is represented in the game by the capital M strategy, upper bound strategy of the media outlet. And we have seen that this upper bound is an inactive constraint when the damage to credibility is low enough, so alpha low and alpha bar, while it is an active constraint when the damage to credibility is too high. I haven't said anything about the specific situation alpha equal to alpha bar, but uh, it, this, is, uh, this is interesting because looking at the case where alpha is exactly the threshold alpha bar, we can see that the native upper bound capital M strategy of uh, the leader, so of the media outlet, can be either uh, active constraint or an inactive constraint. And this happens because in this specific situation, the loss of profit due to a loss of credibility um, caused by the publishing of native advertising is exactly balanced by the profit given uh, for the media outlet by publishing native advertising. So in this situation, there are no advantages for the media outlet by publishing or not native advertising. But what I want to highlight is that if when alpha is equal to alpha bar, the media outlet chooses uh, capital N positive, so as an inactive constraint by allowing publishing native advertising on its platform, in this situation, there is gonna be a damage to its credibility, even though there, there, there are no advantages from a profit point of view. So let's try also to understand better uh, the profit point of view for the media outlet. Uh, one of our research question was uh, if native advertising is admissible, so in this situation alpha lower than alpha bar, is native advertising also profitable? So will, uh, will this native advertising re result in a positive profit for, uh, for the media outlet? So I recall here the media outlet profit, and of course, I already said that uh, damage to credibility uh, due to native advertising will result in a damage to the profit since there is a linear revenue related to credibility for the media outlet. But what we can see is that since the capital N strategy uh, that we have computed is the optimal strategy for the media outlet, of course, uh, the uh, profit of the media outlet evaluated at W star and capital N star is greater or equal to the profit of the media outlet evaluated in W star and the capital N equal to zero, where capital N equal to zero means that no native advertising is allowed on the platform. And uh, this last profit is positive. So the answer to this question is yes, because um, publishing na native advertising will result in a positive profit for the media outlet. But what it is interesting is that in this specific situation, when the damage to credibility is low enough and native advertising is admitted on the media platform, uh, the uh, profit uh, gained by admitting native advertising is greater than the profit when no native advertising is admitted. So the reason why the uh, media outlet accepted um, accept uh, publishing native advertising, even though this means that there, there is going to be a damage to its credibility, is that native advertising um, is, uh, of course, uh, uh, will result in uh, an advantage for its profit. So this is what happened, but uh, uh, we haven't analyzed uh, in details what, uh, what happens or what concerns the credibility. And what we have to answer now is that admitting native advertising is enough to say that uh, also the credibility of the media outlet remains positive in the long term. So what we are uh, interested in is whether saying that native advertising is optimal for the media outlet from a profit point of view, so the damage to credibility is low enough, alpha lower than alpha bar, is enough to say that the credibility steady state that we have computed before is positive. 
but solving this inequality with respect to alpha, we obtain this threshold alpha C. And of course, we want to understand if alpha lower than alpha bar is enough to say then that uh, alpha is also lower than this alpha credibility threshold. But looking at the alpha credibility threshold, we can see that there are some parameter such as Kn, Kw, or theta uh, W uh, that are not, present, are not present in alpha bar. And this means that we cannot really uh, compare the two thresholds, alpha bar and alpha C. So the answer to this question is not necessarily because it may happen that uh, the credibility steady state become negative, even though admitting native advertising is optimal from a profit point of view for the media outlet. And this may happen, for instance, if the weight of credibility eta in the media payoff is too low, or if the cost coefficient kW to sustain credibility is too high. So um, what we have obtained so far is that um, uh, from a profit point of view, when the damage to credibility is low, um, it is optimal for a media outlet to publish native advertising. But um, uh, this is not the same from a credibility point of view, because it may happen that the credibility become negative, uh, becomes negative in the long run. And of course, this doesn't make any sense from an economic point of view. This, will mean, uh, this means that, uh, that the game will stop at a finite time. But uh, this, of course, is something that um, uh, a media outlet is not like to happen. So um, admitting native advertising cannot just be a matter of profit for a media outlet. It needs also to be a matter of credibility, even more if the media outlet is highly concerned with its credibility. So at this point, we introduce uh, a cost of credibility, where for us, the cost of credibility is the loss of profit that the media would suffer by choosing to safeguard its credibility rather than admitting native advertising. What does this mean? We, this means that we are um, assuming that uh, admitting native advertising is optimal from a profit point of view, so the damage to credibility is low enough and uh, hence alpha is lower than the threshold alpha bar. But since a uh, uh, media outlet is highly concerned with its credibility, this media outlet decides to safeguard its credibility and uh, refuses to uh, publish native advertising. So uh, in this situation, the media sets capital N equal to zero, refusing native advertising. And um, choosing capital N equal to zero, what happened is that the, the variation in, cre in credibility is positive because, of course, there is no more damage due to, the, due to native advertising. So uh, the credibility when no native advertising is admitted, admitted is higher than the credibility when native advertising is published. But the variation in profit is negative because native advertising was optimal from a profit point of view. And, and for us, this cost of credibility is uh, represented by uh, the, uh, the ratio in absolute value between the variation of uh, profit and the variation of credibility. So we are trying to understand how the uh, profit varies with respect to the variation of credibility. And this gives up this threshold. And looking at this cost and value, what we can see is that the cost of credibility decreases in eta and also decreases in alpha. And this happens because, of course, higher this marginal profit for the media outlet related to its credibility, of course, lower is going to be the, the cost for, of credibility, while it uh, decreases in alpha because the higher the damage to credibility due to native advertising, lower is going to be this cost of credibility. So just to sum up what we have uh, obtained uh, is that uh, we have um, analyzed a Stackelberg, uh, um, a Stackelberg differential game where 
uh, there is a firm investing in advertising, acting as the follower, and the media outlet uh, publishing, advertising, acting uh, as the leader. And the media outlet has to consider a trade-off between gaining profit through native advertising and a consequent loss of credibility due to native advertising. And what we have obtained is that uh, native advertising may be optimal uh, for the media outlet when the damage to its credibility is low enough, but uh, uh, also in this situation, uh, it may happen that uh, the uh, credibility of the media outlet becomes zero at a finite time. And this happens because of the damage to its credibility. So um, admitting or not uh, native advertising um, is, uh, uh, I mean, an hard choice because it's not just a matter of profit, it needs also to be a matter of credibility. So this is what we have found, and we have uh, searching. Um, we have found an open loop Zuckerberg equilibrium that is also time consistent. And in our game, we have also introduced a non-typical bound for uh, follower control because at the beginning I say that we have introduced um, a capital N upper bound of the media outlet that was an upper bound on a strategy of the followers so of the firm. So this is, uh, these are our results. And before leaving you, I want to um, explain an open problem that we are now facing. Um, we have studied uh, this game, uh, but uh, at this point we introduced this, uh, red this uh, red term in the goodwill, uh, meaning that we are considering this um, evolution of the problem by uh, saying that the efficiency gamma hen of native advertising depends on the credibility of the media outlet. And of course, this is interesting, but this um, gives us some problems because uh, in this situation, the time consistency of our open loop Stuckelberg equilibrium is no more guaranteed because the follower for state function are controllable by the leader. So uh, we are now uh, facing this, this problem and we also try to solve this problem by searching for a Nash equilibria instead of uh, uh, open loop Zuckerberg equilibria. But um, looking at this game, what I want to say is that um, um, introducing the dependence with respect to uh, the credibility for the native advertising efficiency will result uh, in um, eliminating the capital and upper bound strategy uh, from the problem because uh, uh, this capital and upper bound strategy is no more needed since uh, a higher investment in native advertising will result in a higher damage to credibility so in a lower efficiency uh, of native advertising in the goodwill evolution and hence uh, a lower investment in native advertising. So this is the problem that we are now facing. And of course, if you have any su suggestion about these problems, but also any comments or question about what I explained so far, please uh, feel free to ask me. And thank you for the attention. Yeah.